You know that feeling where you spent hours, days, weeks building out something to a stakeholder's requirements only for them to then turn around and say that it doesn't actually look how they wanted it to, needs to be redone, or even worse, that's fine, I'll just export to Excel. Frustrating, right? Now imagine not only stopping that from happening, but also being able to speed up your report building process at the same time. Well, that dream is just a wireframe away and I'll explain how. So you might be thinking, what is a wireframe? Well, a wireframe is a design process to create a lo-fi basic looking report, sort of a skeleton, if you will, of how you want your actual report to look like. And this is used with a lot of UI and UX design for like web pages, apps, but also you can use this perfectly for doing dashboard builds and report builds too. And the great thing is it allows you to focus on the structure and the layout without the need of including all the detailed elements like charts. So how does wireframing actually save you time? So like at the start of the video, a lot of the time when you actually get the stakeholders requirements and what they need, they don't always necessarily know what they really need. And also not being able to actually explain what they actually really want in a sort of visual aspect. You're kind of basing it on what they're telling you and that is not always technically what's in their head. So not only does it allow you to actually just show what the actual report will look and being able to actually visually show to the stakeholder what they expect to see when you build it out, but it also gets you to be able to get them thinking about the actual data requirements they need. There's a lot of times when you get a requirement that they say they want this, but actually once you start showing it in a report, then they realize actually this is not what I needed, I needed something else, and then you find out what that is. This way you can kind of get them thinking exactly what they need and what it needs to show. And it also helps you know the actual purpose of the actual report as well. And then here's the great thing about a wireframe, not all wireframes need to be done by you. That's right, you don't always have to be the one who creates the wireframe. That can actually be done by the stakeholder themselves. And the great thing is, there's many different ways that they can do it. And also you could collaborate as well. But the idea here is this will save you even more time instead of you having to flesh out what they're telling you, they can actually provide that information themselves. And then if it's not correct, when you actually end up creating the report, that's down to them. And then you have more pushback to be able to give yourself a bit more time when you have to do any changes because they actually created what they wanted in the first place. And you're always gonna have updates because once they see it in person, they're like, oh, actually we could do with this and this, but not necessarily the requirement would need to be completely rebuilt again, which can happen. So now you know what a wireframe is and also how it can actually save you the time. How do you go about actually creating them? But the great thing is there's so many different ways you can and it's finding the one that suits you best or even the stakeholder best. And this can be as simple as just using pen and paper. As pen and paper can allow you just on the fly, just sketch out an idea. It can be in a notepad. It can just be literally on a bit of paper. You can do it. The stakeholder can do it. And then you can work with the stakeholder as well, sketching out the idea so then they can visually see it. So then they know what they're telling you is matching what they're seeing. And then also they can add in any additional information as well if they want. And it's extremely inexpensive just to have a bit of paper and a pen, but it's not the most environmentally friendly. So the next best thing is to be able to use something that doesn't actually use paper. So a more digital form like an iPad or any form of tablet or even the Remarkable, if you have any of those, Obviously it's a more expensive one to actually just go out and buy them just to do wireframing. So if you already have one, I would suggest using it. If you don't, then the next best thing is that you can get reusable notepads as well. Like this one by Rocket Notebook. I actually got this for my birthday this year because I was doing some research on different ones. And the thing I liked about this one is the actual simplicity of it because it's very thin and this one's the medium size. You can get one that's like a notebook and you get one that's larger as well. But I went for the medium size one so it's nice and easy to carry around. 
and then also you've got your pen as well that comes with it it didn't cost that much compared to buying a more expensive machine i think in the end this was something like 25 pounds which is probably about 35 dollars and the other great thing with this is it comes with different pages lined versions and dotted versions grid versions which make it really easy to be able to do some wireframing of any dashboard or report and then once you've finished and you're happy with it use a little cross at the bottom to be able to mark where you set where you want this to save. In this case, I have different folders in my OneDrive where what I have to do is cross, go into the app, take a picture of it, and then sends that copy there. And then once finished, and all I have to do is just wipe it with the cloth, slightly damp, and then it's got another page for you to be able to use all over again. And you still have your wireframe saved for whenever you need it again. And that's not the only reusable thing that you can use at work. Most likely, if you work in an office or even if you work at home, you might have a whiteboard around. And whiteboards are really, really great for being able to do this as well. One, because they're generally quite large, so you've got more scope to be able to actually create what you wanna create. But also, if you've got one while you're in a meeting and you're going through the requirements, you can actually sketch out on the fly, just like with a pen and paper, doing that as well. And then once you're done, you can just take a picture on your phone and then you got that as your reference and then it can just be wiped off and then start all over again. And that sort of covers all the ones that go to when you're using your hands just for being able to write or anything like that. But for programs on your actual computer, one of the best ones, believe it or not, is actually Excel. And you might be thinking, well, why would I want to create it in Excel? Well, technically you wouldn't, but they're great for the stakeholder because the stakeholders generally have used Excel all their lives. Most of the people who ever ask for anything, they've always used Excel. Whenever they've had a report, it's generally always in Excel. So in their head, they think how they want it is generally how it looks in Excel. So if you get them to create it in Excel, you'll most likely get the information you need a lot clearer than if they were trying to write it out or anything like that, because some people are not that creative when it comes to being able to draw stuff and they might be a bit self-conscious about doing it and don't really want to show that going like, oh, my writing and everything looks terrible. But if you get them to do it in Excel, they can just send it over and then you're able to use that. And the majority of the cases, whenever I deal with stakeholders, I normally ask them just to do a draft in Excel and they can normally knock up something really quickly. They normally pull it off for a bit, but then they end up getting around to it. And then you're like, oh, there you go. I've now got the report. And sometimes it has little things extra in it, which they haven't really thought about before, but now they started building it out. They were like, oh, actually this is really useful. And this is extremely important. And then also you can then go, okay, you've given me this. What does it mean? What's the calculation you need it to be? They can add that information as well in the cells. So you're actually getting not only your kind of finished wireframe before you've even had to do anything. And then you could just start building it out and then be able to provide them a report a lot quicker than if you were just going back and forth, doing changes, checking what they meant by this particular metric, what they said in there and so on and so forth. So I always advise if you're going to request for anything, Excel is probably the best thing to use. And then the next best thing to use, which other people are used to using, is either PowerPoint or Google Slides. Now, these ones are good because you can have them in the cloud. You can technically with Excel. But the good thing about we're working with PowerPoint or any presentation software that is able to not only be a desktop version, but also in the cloud is that you can collaborate. So you could technically have this back and forth where you make something and then you show it to the actual stakeholder. You could be on a meeting, change it around. They can then play around with it, add some extra bits that they might like the look of. And then you just got that. And all it is, is just creating little blocks and then they can put the information in. And then the great thing is once you've done with it, you can then reuse these templates in the future. So then you're not stuck going, oh, now I need to create something from scratch again. You can always reference back to that and just change it around for whatever next thing you need. And obviously having templates is such a time saver, which now brings me to the king of wireframing. As wireframe is very much down to sort of designing UX, UI design for different things. One of the key free softwares out there that people use is Figma. Now, Figma not only allows you to create really good looking wireframes, be able to showcase what you want, but also you can create backgrounds for your reports as well. So technically you could 
create your background, do your wireframe, and then use that background and then actually use that wherever you want to put that background in. And because you're able to build these templates, you could create multiple different versions that are all in these different places on the one page. And you're able to drag and drop as you build out your template. And it's so much easier and so much better to create your wireframe if you already have stock images of sections like a chart or a table or something where you can actually visually show what that would look like. And then also allow you to be able to add in what it is, all the elements that would be in it as well. The only downfall with Figma is it does have a learning curve where the majority of all the other things, which I've talked about so far, maybe PowerPoint might have a bit more of a learning curve if you haven't really used it, but all the others are pretty much quite straightforward. It's whatever you've got in your head, you can kind of flesh it out and there you go, you've got it. But with Figma, you would need to actually learn it. But there are many different templates out there that you could kind of go and pick and choose, just go and grab and then just create your own ones, look how they made them and then just copy those and then you can just reuse those. So as you can see, there are many different ways that you could create a wireframe and you can see how much that will save your time and effort whenever you try and build out reports again. But the key thing to always remember with all these different ones is always pick the one that suits the need at the time. If you're just fleshing out a quick report that someone wants, there's no point in building out this big load of template thing. Generally just quick scribble over a whiteboard, pen and paper, or even just in Excel, that would be enough. But if you're gonna start building out more complex things that just need a bit more fleshing out and stuff, that's where the template things might come more in handy. But in a way, really, you want to be able to use the thing that your stakeholder feels more comfortable with because then they can do a lot more of the work to be able to explain what they want from you to give them what they need. And if you're interested in learning how to build the dashboard that you've seen all the wireframes have been creating for, why don't you check out this video over here where I show you how I made it. And as always, until next time.